lorsque on est con, j'ai vu la nouvelle, que j'aurai l'occasion de parler parmi vous, euh, j'étais comme ça. Yeah! TEDx Hero! Je peux aller à Burundi, le pays de mille et une colline. Voilà. Mais, quand j'ai appris que je devrais le faire en pensée, je ressemblais, je ressemblais à ça. Ah! Yes! Je dois le faire en français. Ok. So, textbooks, camera textbooks, everything. Uh, je vais essayer de, de faire ma présentation, au moins de l'introduction en français. Uh, mais après ça, moitié en français, moitié en anglais, 10% en français. Um, ouais. Voici mes parents. Uh, mon père est nigérian, uh, nigérien, uh, ma mère est anglaise. Um, ils se sont rencontrés à Londres dans les années 70 et ils ont tombé amoureux. Uh, ils se sont mariés et uh, ils sont rentrés uh, au, pour s'installer au Nigeria. Et là, je suis né et, et grandi. Et c'est à cause, uh, c'est leur esprit um, aventurier et leur diversité culturelle qui m'a conduit à, à imaginer et à créer What's Up Africa. Et je vais expliquer ce que c'est What's Up Africa. Um, but for now, I can say I enjoy it very much. And uh, as, um, as was said before I started, yeah, it's, it's my passion now. That's, uh, that's kind of embedded in me. <laughs> me, yeah. Um, but it could all have been so, so different, right? Um, comme vous savez, si vous avez un parent africain, um, il faut que oh, tu dois être euh, avocat, comptable, médecin, ingénieur, quelque chose comme ça. Et je me souviens um, uh, que mon père m'a présenté chez des gens comme euh, bonjour, bonjour, voilà, voici mon fils, il sera avocat. <rire> ben, il sera avocat. Et après ça, bon, il s'appelle Ikena. <rire> Third priority. Um, et je ne voulais pas le décevoir et je suis devenu avocat. Um, but although my dad was very happy, I was not. I was pretty miserable in fact. I didn't feel fulfilled in what I was doing. Uh, I was desperate to do something more creative um, that I was actually passionate about. Yeah, this is kind of how I felt chaque matin. Est-ce qu'il y a des gens dans cette salle qui reconnaissent ce sentiment-là euh, Et j'ai décidé d'arrêter mon boulot. Euh, et euh, yeah, j'ai réalisé que euh, pendant des années, euh, mon père, euh, oh, yeah, ma carrière, ma vie, to some extent, a été euh, décrite, définie par la souhait de mon père. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Um, and I love them very much. And he didn't want to do good for me, but I was desperate to do something else. Okay? Uh, and that was the trigger for me to become a journalist. I started at the bottom of the ship as a stagiaire at Radio Netherlands Worldwide. And after a year or two years, I had the idea for What's Up Africa. What's Up Africa, c'est un programme, un vidéo blog euh, satirique qui traite des informations africaines. Africain, africaine. Mm, you know what I mean. <laughs> All right. Um, et uh, it's, it's my opportunity to share my frustrations about the portrayal of Africa in Western media, but at the same time also be critical about some of the decisions that our great leaders take um, for their people. Um, but the best way to give you a taste of what I do is to show you a few examples. This first example is about a group of people who really frustrate me a lot because they, well anyway, I'll let you see. What's up Africa? We all know that religion is big business. The Vatican City is rumored to have over a billion dollars worth of assets. That's some serious cash.
but Africans have started following in the footsteps of their European cousins. And unsurprisingly, we're doing it pretty well. Journalist Sandy Rhodes recently made a report about Nigeria's millionaire preachers. Here are some of my favorite bits. I've discovered the secret in God for the higher life. At his home in central Lagos, he showed me his three luxury cars worth over £150,000. What did Jesus do? <coughs> Jesus was a poor man, yeah. He was not. Jesus had nothing. No, it's a lie. Jesus was rich and had an accountant. <laughs> intellectual and damn right handsome. Right, bro? At least it's wrong according to the bosses at Nivea. Nivea recently released a print ad showing a guy preparing to toss a decapitated head with a big afro and brown skin. The delightful tagline was Nivea. Re-civilize yourself. In other words, with an afro and brown skin, according to Nivea, you are completely and utterly uncivilized. <laughs> But have no fear, all you MacMendes, Questlers, Basket Mounds, and D.L. Hewleys out there, because help is at is booming economically, technologically. L'Afrique bouge. Um, foreign direct investment is up 87%. Um, yeah, once a byword for famine, the continent is now the 10th largest producer of livestock. Um, there's a boom in mobile technology and, and even uh, uh, there's lots of creativity in technology, particularly in Nigeria. Yeah, so that's a very <laughs> amazing. Yeah, no, you don't have to. Vous ne pouvez pas me, le, euh, me croire. Il y a des grandes personnalités comme euh, le président chinois. Everyone knows about China's influence, of course, in Africa. So Africa is booming, but, 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 okay. Uh, six of the ten fastest growing economies in the world may be in Africa. Mais uh, <laughs> sept sur dix pays uh, du monde qui distribuent mal les revenus sont aussi africains. Donc euh, l'idée, l'histoire de la montée de la classe moyenne africaine euh, n'est pas précis, en fait. Um, and as some commentators say, Africa is rising, but Africans are not. Huh? So what is it about this um, cliché story that everyone seems to be embracing? Why do people like cliché so much? Um, in Western media, it's either everything is terrible, famine, war, pestilence, or everything is perfect, yeah, Africa's great, you know, why are people afraid of the, the real story, the complete story, as we heard Chimamanda talking about? I think people like cliches because they're safe. They allow us to um, categorize things, put things into neat little boxes, tick the box, and it's fine. Um, yes, sometimes cliches can be fun as well, um, and I've used uh, a kind of stereotype, a cliche in What's Up Africa as well. Um, let's just run a short bit about that clip. Welcome to Pastor Ike Azubike's ministry. Today, I'm on the streets of Niger. I want to find out what people's problems are. How the pastor can help them. And first and last, how God can help them. Amen, praise the Lord. I want to know, what kind of trouble you? For Nigeria. For Nigeria, what kind of wahala do you have? The wild are too plenty. The wild are we get for Nigeria. The which kind? Which kind plenty? Now, it's just a beautiful country, now. It's a beautiful country, but the lights wild are too much. What well, you mean, Nepa? You don't get light. I don't get light for like one week. Ah uh ah! -uh. Where you have the light of God? Amen. 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 Well, what kind of wild you get now? No good road. No light. No water. No food. What do you mean no water? I just bought water from here now. Now pure water you buy now. Yeah? yeah. That, that, that no be water. Everybody no get money to buy water. Let me try something, okay? It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
for one day. Change them for one day. What would you do? The first thing I would change is to give them 24 hours light. I think because I know that's the major issue Nigerians have right now. Buying generator running short. Is this one dimensional story about the continent? Everything is perfect. Um, 6 out of 10, fastest growing, without mentioning the 7 out of 10 and the aspects that our leaders need to work on. We put them there in office. They need to work on that. Um, heureusement, um, les clichés ne déterminent pas les grandes transformations. Uh, ça, c'est uh, les surprises. Surprises and being open to surprises. Um, really leads to big changes. Surprises are um, our leaders who see their role in office as a civic duty for the people. Leaders who um, work for the people um, don't use their time in office just to enrich themselves, who show up to meetings, right? Um, and leaders who aren't afraid to take on um, international institutions on the biggest podium. <laughs> Les origines de la dette remontent aux origines du colonialisme. Ceux qui nous ont prêté de l'argent, ce sont ceux-là qui nous ont colonisés. Ce sont les mêmes qui géraient nos états et nos économies. Ce sont les colonisateurs qui endettaient l'Afrique au prix des barres de fonds leurs frères et cousins. Nous étions étrangers à cette dette. Nous ne pouvons donc pas la payer. La dette, c'est encore le mot colonialiste où les colonisateurs se sont transformés en assistants techniques. En fait, nous devrions dire qu'ils se sont transformés en assassins techniques. Ceux qui nous ont amené, ceux qui nous ont conduit à l'endettement, ont joué comme dans un casino. Quand ils gagnaient, il n'y avait pas de débat. Maintenant qu'ils ont perdu au jeu, Ils nous exigent le remboursement. Et on parle de crise. Non, Monsieur le Président, ils ont joué, ils ont perdu la règle du jeu. La vie continue. Who look at this next slide? 60 secondes. On a pris. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Qu'est-ce qui se passe? 60 secondes. On a la. Mais la réalité, c'est, c'est une minute. That's it. <laughs> That's the reality, you know, the surprises. Surprises are also um, the abused wife and single mother who rises against all odds to become president of her country and do a pretty damn good job about it. Next slide. Our, our cultural, artistic, political ambassadors who um, write, record, um, uh, perform with such sensitivity and such uniqueness that they will guide our generations and generations to come. If surprises were la nourriture, it serait igitoke chitomati ndagala, which I had today. It was like four hours ago. Jenny's Beach, very tasty. I like it. And if um, cliches were la nourriture, it serait ndede. I heard that's a pretty boring dish. <laughs> I'm not it, but it doesn't sound like I should try and have it. Um, ce que je veux dire, c'est que uh, les surprises and being open to surprises um, is very powerful. Huh? Um, if you're open to surprises, surprises make like interesting. And if you're open to surprises, si, si vous êtes disposé aux surprises, uh, vous n'aurez pas peur de, de changer votre vie et changer de cours de votre vie. Um, and, uh, and rise from the very bottoms to plus haut, to the very top. The surprise sont génial. The most I'd like to wrap up is by saying that, yeah, we all know cliches are around us. They exist everywhere. Uh, and cliches, to some extent, uh, make the world go round. But surprises, and being open to surprises, make the world stop and take notice. Merci beaucoup. That's my point.